be demonstrating for you, and they'll send you out on your way. Uh, for this class, we're going to draw a classic character who's created back in 1928, uh, the big cheese himself, the one who started it all. Does anyone know who I'm going to be talking about? Yeah, Mickey. Uh, Mickey, he's going to start with a basic geometric shape. All of our characters do. And he starts with a circle. So as you pick up those pencils, you notice that something's missing on the end to the eraser. That's because what we're doing is called a rough sketch. So you want to keep your lines really light and loose. And the lines that we do want to keep, we'll go back and lock those ones in. That way, all the other lines are going to fade away into the background. So what a rough sketch is all about is getting your ideas on that sheet of paper. On the separate paper, you want to create a circle, I'd say about the size of a tennis ball, baseball is a good size. Uh, when sketching out your circle, make sure you're using that whole entire arc when you draw, and not just the wrist. If you're just using your wrist, it's more as if you're writing than you are drawing. I'll lightly sketch out mine up here. I promise I'll show you to the darkening and parts so if we really want to keep for our mouse. But also make sure you save enough room up for those ears as well. But I'll lightly sketch out my circle up here. So I'm going to create lots and lots of lines in here. That's really what we look for our foundation. If you don't like one side, you can always round it out until you have it the way that you want it. I did just sketch out one circle. I sketched out multiple lines to really help me to build in the shape. But within my circle, I'm also going to add in a few construction lines. Uh, these lines will help us anchor down the features of the face. Let me <coughs> sketch out one line right down the middle of the circle to divide it in half. And for my second construction line, I'll divide it across the middle. So you have a big plus sign right through the middle of your circle. And this is our basic foundation for a mouse. And now that we have the foundation, we can add in some details. So we've got Mickey here on our page. Underneath where our two construction lines are meeting, I'm going to draw on this small squished oval sitting on its side. Or you can also think of it as you're adding in this grape or an olive shape as well. But it's something I want to keep, so I'm going back with more of a heavier line to really lock it into place. So notice now how it's standing out from the rest of the under drawing. Does anyone want to tell me what we just uh, sketched out here for? No. Yeah, and his nose. And his nose sits on the end of a snout. Since we are looking at him straight ahead, you want to be able to see that the nose is coming forward to us on our flat piece of paper. In order to show that here on our sketch, I'll bring up above the nose, I'll add in this little rainbow curve. I'm just stretching this here on either side of his nose. We'll give him a big smile too. For what the smile sits about halfway between the bottom of the nose and the bottom of the circle, halfway in between, I'll add in a little tick point. And halfway between the side of the nose and the side of the circle, I'll add in another little tick point here on either side. And I'll connect all three of these together by drawing in a stretched out letter U shape. So really giving him this big happy day smile. He lives at the happiest place on earth. Uh, he's got houses all over the world. He's a pretty rich mouse, you know. I mean, he's been alive for 95 years already. Uh, but when we smile, we would call it a smile lines on the ends. He gets these too. So I want to cap his smile on either side by drawing in these little rainbow curves. But I'm going to give him an open mouth smile too, to really show how happy he is. By hopping underneath his nose and right underneath the smile, I'll add in another U-curve. So we're stretching it down towards the bottom of the circle and he's curving it right back in towards his smile. So his open mouth is about the width of his nose. With an open mouth, we'll also be able to see a lower lip as well. And that's by adding in another U-shape right underneath their second one. Uh, this one I'll start here along the outside of the circle and following the same shape here along the outside. Showing a little stretch is happening there for him. It's not all staying confined into the circle there as well. 
I'll lift his back both and we'll be able to see his tongue. And for his tongue, I'll add in two small little hills that sit here along the bottom. Just one little hill shape and two little hills. I'll even shade on the back side of his mouth too to even add in some contrast into our sketch. But with him having a big smile, his cheeks are getting pushed up on either side of his face. And it's sitting up above his smile line and right on top of our construction line, I'm going to draw in another rainbow curve. So I'm going to stretch this one out over towards the edge here of the circle. You can really think of it as an extension line to that smile line, it's just a little thicker there for him. Um, when you reach the side of the circle, pick out your favorite line and lock it back in towards the lower lip to close it off. So you're ending up with this sideways letter J or even a hook here along the side of his face. And you can definitely break outside of that original circle as well. So say you want to give Mickey chubbier cheeks, you could definitely do that by breaking outside of your circle. Your circle and your construction lines are merely guidelines there for you. Uh, your eye is going to focus way more on a darker line than it will all of those lighter lines. But right now we've already sketched out the bottom half here of Mickey. So how are our drawings turning out so far? Pretty good. Good, not too bad. Are we having fun? Yeah. Woo. Yeah, good. That's the most important part about drawing is really having fun with this here anyway. Uh, but now we can really move up to the most expressive part for any character, a character's eyes. You want to think of Mickey's eyes as there's some oval shapes or even grains of rice or watermelon seeds as well. Uh, to where they're going to sit is they're going to sit right on top of his snout line. Those are about halfway up towards the top of the circle as well. So I'm going to lightly sketch out his eyes as some tall ovals. So one over along the left hand side of the construction line. I'll even use a construction line in the middle to add in a little separation in between the two ovals. Now I'm going to go back and lock them in so you've got more of a surfboard being stuck in sand. Uh, the reason why they look more like surfboards is that we don't get the full lobe of the eye, you get most of it, but the snout actually covers a little part of it at the bottom. It's to show that the nose is sitting out there a little further in the sketch as well. Uh, but for his pupils, you can place them anywhere inside the eyes you want. You can have him thinking, looking at your neighbor, googly eye, adding some hearts or stars in there for pupils. Uh, I'll have him look straight ahead at all of you by placing his pupils down here along the bottom corners here of his eye. Or you can even go with more of a classic style Mickey too by shaving the whole entire eye into as well. Uh, Mickey actually didn't get these pupils until 1940 in Fantasia where he had to do a lot of his acting uh, with his eyes since he couldn't talk in the film. But I'm making sure that the pupils are really the darkest part of the sketch. It's where all the attention and focus goes to is right inside the eyes. So I'm making sure that they're standing out nice and dark. So I know who the first voice of her Mickey Mouse was? Yeah, Walt Disney. So I know what Mickey's first words were? It was in a short called a Carnival Kid. He was selling something. Not hamburgers, but what's another? Hot dogs. Yeah, hot dogs was actually his first words. Uh, Mickey has what we call a character mask. It's the black letter M that helps to frame in his face. Uh, this also helps to act as his eyebrows too. So if Mickey was angry, for example, this character mask would be pushed down in towards the center. But we want him happy here in our portrait. So I'm gonna hop up towards the top of the circle in the middle, and I'll add in a little letter B shape, just a little middle part of the mask. And for the rest of the character mask, I'm gonna push this up and away from his eyes and dropping it right back down in towards the cheek. So I'm gonna push this up towards the top here of the circle, and it's going around his eyes here for him and just dropping it right back down in towards the cheek. 
So you're winding up with this big letter M word. You could also think of it as you're adding this heart shape that's really helping to frame in his face. And by pushing the darker areas away from our focal point, I think those eyes there for him too. I'll lock in uh, the rest of his head along the top as well as on the sides. Uh, so that we're missing something uh, pretty important for this little guy, right? What are we missing? Yeah, those famous mouse ears. There's no actual size and placement for where his ears sit. Uh, they sit about a 45 degree angle from the middle of his face. Uh, between our two construction lines is that 45 degree angle. So in between these two would be right about here. And in between these two would be right about here. His ears are also half the size of his face. If you think of his face as the size of a quarter, his ears would be about the size of dimes. It's always better though to make the ears too big than too small. If you make them too small, you might end up with more of a bear cub or a chipmunk on your page instead of a mouse. I was just very lightly sketching out the ears, still using that whole entire arm to sketch them out here for him. And then once you got the size and placement of them the way that you want, you can start to go back and lock them in. You can also lock in or darken up really any of the lines that have started to fade away throughout our drawing process here uh, for Mickey. Uh, what's really significant about Seaboat Willie was the first cartoon uh, was Synchronized Sam. It actually also happens to be uh, the birthday of Mickey and Minnie Mouse as well as the release date of Steamboat Willie, which happens to be on uh, November 18th, uh, 1928. Uh, so just this past November, uh, both mice uh, turned 95 uh, years old. Wow. Yeah, I know, they're getting up there in age, right? But they still look really good. Uh, but you can also go back and lock in, darken up, any of the lines that have started to fade away. Uh, the last step an artist needs to make is a signature. And you can sign your name wherever you feel it fits best. And after all done it, you have sketched out your very own Mr. Mickey Mouse. What to start it all? I also made a club day for you and me. Well, how did we all do? Pretty good. Pretty good? Yeah. Awesome. Did we have